By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome at the Dark Tournament. This is our last episode to all good things must come an end, right? And we have reached the finals of the Dark Tournament. And in the finals, we see a mirror match between probably the two strongest decks in the format, right? Or I should say the strongest deck in the format because they're both basically playing with similar decks with small differences. Both of these players, Aryan on the left, Xander on the right, are on black and green. And uh, before I go into their decks and kind of discuss why this is most likely uh, the, the best possible deck that you can build with the dark only cards in this format, um, I would first like to point out that you can also skip that section and you can go straight to the finals themselves. How can you do that? It's quite simple. Check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps is called MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the first game, you know, straight into the action and you can enjoy the finals. If you want to stick around here, I am going to start by looking at the deck of Aryan and then I'm going to look at the deck of his opponent, Xandor, here in the finals. And we're going to look at the little differences that may be there. And of course, we're going to look at all those similarities and discuss why black and green is so strong when you're playing a the dark only tournament. Okay, so let's just dive in straight away. We're going to start with Aryan. Let's get his picture up here. And here we see the deck picture of Aryan's deck that he is called Dark Soros Wood. And, um, well, let's take a closer look at it, shall we? So it's black and it's green. And I've been thinking about this, you know, why is black and green so strong in the dark only? Well, first off, green gives you the best bang for your buck when you talk about creatures. You get just very powerful creatures for affordable mana. You've got a uh, Spitting Slug, which is two green and one for a two four, which is just a really good stats for three mana. Then you've got Wormwood Tree Folk, which is a four four for five mana with Evasion, which is really good. You know, Evasion, of course, I'm talking about the Forest Walk and Swamp Walk option. So that's really good. You also have Tracker to kill creatures like, uh, like Preacher. You can trade for Brothers of Fire, you know? So again, that's also a very useful creature. Um, and then on the black side, creature-wise, there is not so much in there. I mean, you've got Eater of the Dead, which is which is pretty cool because you can untap the Eater of the Dead and then you can use it as an attacker and as a blocker. So that's kind of nice. Um, and of course, you've got a flyer in the form of Bog Imp. Interestingly enough, a lot of uh, black and green players decided not to play with Bog Imp. I think what makes black so strong, of course, is the Ashes to Ashes card, right? Two black and one to cast for a sorcery that removes not one, but two target creatures from the game. Now, the downside of this card is that you have to take five damage. Now, that is where another very strong and key card in this tournament comes in. That's Dark Heart of the Wood. Now, Dark Heart of the Wood, one green, um, one black and enchantment. That's quite important because in this format, there's no enchantment rem removal, right? So it's an enchantment and you can sacrifice a forest to gain three life. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but I mean, do you really want to sacrifice a land for three life? Well, actually you kind of do because these games, they tend to take a bit longer, especially when you're the player who is playing a two, four creature for just three mana. That is really kind of gumming up the board. That's what, what green does best, you know, get a lot of creatures out, get them pretty cheap. And there's also, of course, the great ramp card Elves of Deep Shadow that I haven't talked about, a 1-1 one, one for one green that you can tap for a black mana, you know, so that's perfect ramp in decks like this. So you've got ramp, you've got big creatures, you've got great removal. And then for the mid game, late game, you've got the perfect thing to keep you alive, which is Dark Heart of the Wood. And I think the combination of those four factors is what's making the black and green deck so incredibly powerful. Now, one of the differences between the decks that our two finalists are playing is that the deck, deck of Aryan is choosing to go for a little bit of evasion in the form of the uh, Bog Imp. So it's a 1-1 one, one flyer for one black and one. And you may think, okay, that is really bad. But in the dark only, that is actually quite good. There are not a lot of flyers in the dark only. You've got Fire Drake, which is two red and one. So it's a red card. So you know your opponent is not playing it. You've got Ghost Ship, which is two blue and two, which is the other flyer. Again, there's no blue um, finalist here. There are n n none of the uh, uh, mages is playing with blue. So you don't have to uh, take that in. So Bog Imp, it could be, it could actually play a pretty important role here. You know, um, another card here that we see is uh, Binding Grasp. Now, Binding Grasp uh, is 
actually a pretty nice card. Two black and X uh, for a sorcery, and, 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 and the X amount is how many uh, creatures you want to tap down. Now, that kind of reminds me of another interesting, the dark creature that we, I think we see in both decks, that is a Lurker. Now, Lurker is a 2-3 creature, one green and two, say so 2-3 three for three is actually a pretty good deal uh, in old school magic. Usually when you pay three mana, you get a 2-2. Two, two. So in this case, you get a 2-3. And the Lurker has this weird ability that it can only be targeted when it's declared an attacker or a blocker. So some people think you can target it when it's tapped. No, you cannot. It has to be declared as an attacker or as a blocker. That means that with Binding Grasp, you can't touch the Lurker. There's nothing you can do. And I, I believe we saw that earlier, maybe the semifinals or the quarterfinals. I'm not sure where that was actually relevant, you know, because that 2-3 makes it kind of annoying. There are so many 2-2 two, two creatures in this format and just having a 2-3 as a blocker or an attacker makes it very powerful and Binding Grasp can't touch it. Uh, another interesting card here in this deck, I think is Book of Wrath. There are not a lot of ways to draw cards in this format. So when you're kind of in mid game and you've played out all your creatures, um, you know, you could have a situation where you just have maybe one or two lands in hand and that's about it. Then it's really nice when you draw into a Book of Wrath. And of course, Book of Wrath, uh, six to cast for an artifact, you can pay two mana and you gotta pay two life and then you can draw a card and you can do this multiple times. You don't have to tap the book, like for, in for instance, the big book, the tome, right? The tome, you gotta tap to draw a card for four. In this case, this book, the Book of Wrath, you pay two, you pay two life, you draw a card and you can do that multiple times. But two life, of course, it's pretty costly, but hey, wait a minute, you're playing with Dark Heart of the Wood, right? So you can exchange forests for cards and that's exactly uh, what I've seen Aryan do a few times in his matches. I'm curious to see if we're going to see that in the finals as well. Okay, so this is the deck of Aryan. Take a good look because now we're going to look at the deck of Xandor and the deck looks the same, but we are going to focus on the differences and try to find out where the two strategies kind of take a turn and go into another direction and what strategy might be victorious here. So this is the deck of Aryan. Now let's take a, a look at the deck of his opponent, Xandor. Let's go. And here we see the deck of the other finalist, Xandor, and he's playing with a deck also black and green. He's called it Cult of the Deepwood. So before we dive into the differences, let's just take a look at some of the similarities. We see four Elves of Deep Shadow, right? Makes sense in both of these decks. Four Wormwood Tree folks, absolute killer creatures. We're gonna see tons of those being played and probably being quite decisive uh, with that Forest Walk and Swamp Walk ability. Remember, both of these players playing with Forest and Swamp. So Wormwood Tree folk is even better in this matchup for both players. It's going to be a really dangerous card. We also see four Trackers. Now Trackers, they are great to remove 1-1 one -one creatures, right? They're just perfect. So I think those poor little flying bog games are gonna get killed by the tracker, by Xander's trackers. I think we're gonna see that. Also, both players playing with four Ashes to Ashes. So that are some of the similarities, right? The Ashes to Ashes, the trackers, the Elves of Deep Shadows, the Wormwood Tree folks, and of course, Dark Heart of the Wood, right? Giving you the life so that Ashes to Ashes can always be played out. I think that's just such a strong combination. And it's shown through this tournament time and time again, Dark Heart of the Wood, keeps you alive, lets you cast that Ashes to Ashes, and Ashes to Ashes is just a brilliant two for one. It'll it'll give you that advantage on the board. And since you're playing with green, you probably already have tons of creatures, and just taking away two creatures with one card like that, wow, that is powerful. Anyway, these are the similarities, but what's maybe more interesting are looking at the differences. So one of the main things that kind of catches my eye are those four land leeches. Um, Xander is choosing Land Leeches, it's a 2-2 two, two first striker for 2 green and 1 over the Spitting Slug, and Spitting Slug is a 2-4 two, for 2 green and 1. So for the same casting cost, you have a 2-4 or you have a 2-2. Two, two. Now of course, first strike is a good ability, especially when you're blocking and you have two of these Land Leeches. It means you can kill any 4-4 four, four creature and you get to keep your creatures, right? So I'm not underestimating first strike here, but... For me, Spitting Slug just seems like the better option. So Xander, let me know in the comments below, how has Land Leech just been doing for you? I guess they've been doing really well since you've made it all the way to the finals. And what am I missing here? Why is Land Leech just a better option than Spitting Slug? Of course, with Spitting Slug, you've got to pay a green and one to make sure that your opponent doesn't get first strike, right? When it's blocking it or when it becomes blocked. Uh, and But then, you know, at least you can give your Spitting Slug first strike. Is that maybe the reason? 
Anyway, let me know. Um, so some other differences here. We see the, uh, the creature Banshee, and we don't see a Banshee main in, uh, in Aryan's list. We do see it in his sideboard. Now, Banshee, two in the main here of Xandor, quite an interesting card, two black and two, and it's an O one one creature summon Banshee, X and tap, and Banshee does X damage, half rounded up to you, and half rounded down to any one target. So you can use Banshee, um, you know, to basically kill uh, creatures as well. The problem, of course, is Banshee hurts you. It deals damage. Now, again, this is where Dark Heart of the Wood comes in that can save you. So Banshee, I think, is, is particularly good when you're playing, for example, against White. You know, you just want to get rid of the Preacher as fast as you can. And Banshee is also a nice finisher because it can deal half of that damage to any one target. So it's basically direct damage, right? Which is pretty cool and exceptional to see that in a black card, right? A card like this. And I really like the fact that the dark is so many cards where you actually get hurt as a player. That's really a theme in the dark. You see that in every single color. And again, that is making Dark Heart of the Wood that much more strong. Another card that I'd like to point out here is a card that I keep calling Barrel's Cage, but it's actually pronounced Barrel's Cage. It's spelled Barrel's Cage, so I'm going to call it Barrel's Cage. So sorry for everybody who's listening to my rambling and keep saying it's not Barrel's Cage, it's Barrel's Cage. It is Barrel's Cage, you're right. So this cage, it's an artifact, four to cast. You can pay three and target creature does not untap as normal during its controller's untap uh, phase. So Barrel's Cage, when I started brewing with the dark, I thought, oh, this is really a, a card that I enjoy. This is really a good card. And what I like in this deck is the combination with Word of Binding. So Word of Binding, again, something that Aryan's playing as well. Two black and X for that sorcery, right? And you can tap X target creatures. And then with Barrel's Cage, the next turn, or after, or actually I should say, um, you can kind of keep them tapped. But the problem is you need tons and tons of mana, right, to do this. But in some kind of weird way, it can work out. Another thing I like about Bar um, Barrel's Cage is uh, when maybe Aryan is doing kind of like an alpha strike or just an attack. Let's say he's just attacking with the creature. Um, afterwards, you take the damage, but at least you can pay uh, three mana with your Barrel's Cage and it doesn't untap the next turn. So that's kind of going to make it more costly for Aryan to attack, right? He's going to think twice before he attacks with the Barrel's Cage on the field. Now, another interesting card here is uh, Rune Sword. Both of these players are actually playing uh, with the Rune Sword. And this is, it surprises me a little bit, um, but maybe it shouldn't because both these players are playing with it and both of these players are in the final. So Rune Sword, six mana to cast for this He-Man sword. I mean, the art is incredible. Christopher Rush, what an artist you were. Um, three and tap, target attacking creature gets plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. When that creature leaves the battlefield this turn, sacrifice Rune Sword. Okay, so far I'm not very impressed with the Rune Sword, right? You gotta pay six to cast it, three to activate to give target creature plus two, plus O. Oh, and if a creature dies, you also, you know, you also lose your Rune Sword. But maybe this is the interesting part. If the creature deals damage to a creature this turn, the creature dealt damage can be regenerated this turn. If a creature dealt damage by the targeted creature, uh, exile that creature, right? So if it would die, exile that creature instead. So I guess that little clause where it says the creature cannot regenerate, maybe that's why it's in here. If you're attacking with, let's say, a spitting slug, or, okay, let's go, we're looking at Xandor's list, right? Let's go with the land leeches. So he's attacking with the land leeches and your opponent has a ghost ship, one of the strongest creatures in the format, right? A 2-4 flyer. You can use your rune sword, make your land leeches a 4-2 first strike. So you're going to kill the ghost ship and even better, the owner of the ghost ship cannot pay three blue to regenerate it. So the ghost ship is gone. So I guess that is the reason why we are seeing it um, in both of these lists. So I'm saying, I guess, because I'm not sure, but I think that's the main reason. There are a few regeneration creatures in here, um, so that makes it worthwhile. Also, I can see the synergy between uh, Land Leeches and Rune Sword, right? You're turning it into a 4-2 four, four first striker. That's sounding, that's sounding pretty badass. And again, if you're expecting these games to go long, then you don't really care about this high casting cost of six. All you're looking at is that plus two, plus O oh bonus. Okay, so now we've discussed both of these decks. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe pause it right here. Let me know what deck do you think is going to win this mirror match because there are little differences, uh, you know, and I can't wait. So, you know what? Let's go to game one and see how this is going to end up. Let's go to the finals.
And here we go. Game number one of the Dark Only Tournament Finals with Xandor on the right and Aryan on the left. Look at them go. Both having a great opener here with Elves of Deep Shadow. This is what both of these players want to do. Let's see who can now ramp into a three mana spell. That's not quite it. We see uh, the Scavenger Folk, the one one that you can sack to destroy an artifact. And Aryan is doing a little bit better with a three drop on turn number two because of that Elves of Deep Shadow, a lurker, a two three creature that you can only target when it's declared a blocker or an attacker. And Xander is playing Dark Heart of the Wood, a key card in both of these decks, but not as important in the early game. But it's always good to have it on the field and there's no way to get rid of it. So you might as well play it out. And there is a forest number three and there is a tracker. Interestingly here is that Aryan cannot find any swamps. Luckily for him, he's got that Elves of Deep Shadow that can at least make one black. Oh, look at Xander go here. 4-4, four, four, Wormwood Tree Folk. And remember, he can give the Wormwood Tree Folk a forest walk for two green. That means it's unblockable for Aryan and he could go in for four. Of course, uh, it, when you activate that ability, you do take two damage yourself. And oh, and Aryan playing his own Wormwood Tree Folk. And you know, this is what we're going to see a lot in this final match here. Both players playing with black and green. Both players having a lot of similarities in their decks. I think the biggest difference here is that Aryan's playing with uh, with Bog Imp, the 1-1 one, one flyer. And Xandor, for example, has chosen to play with Banshee Main. And with, um, uh, what's it called again, the 2-2 two, two for Striker. For 3, the Land Leeches. So those are like the little differences in the deck. And it's interesting, he chose to play the Wormwood Tree Folk. He also could have chosen to activate uh, his tracker to take care of the Elves of Deep Shadow. Of course, that would mean that he would probably take four now. Oh, look at that, Xander going for the attack. Basically offering the trade here to Aryan. It's going to be interesting to see what he's going to do. Remember, there is no Giant Growth in this format. So there's no combat trick that I can think of, at least. So he's offering a decent trade, but why is Xander doing that? Does that mean that he has another creature that he wants to play after this? Maybe an Eater of the Dead, maybe another Wormwood Tree Folk. Or does he just want to offer the trade here? Aryan taking it, taking the trade. Seems like a sensible thing to do here. And there is another Wormwood Tree Folk by Xandor. So now that makes sense, that attack. And I think if I was Aryan, I would really consider taking out the Elves now. Because remember, with two black, Xandor can play out his Ashes to Ashes. That would be pretty disastrous because he could leave, uh, lose his Elves of Deep Shadow and that's his only black source at the moment. Okay, so he's using the tracker, taking out the Elves of Deep Shadow. I think that's a good play. That does mean he's probably going to take four next turn from the Wormwood Tree Folk. Let's see what else he can do here. Scavenger Folk. And okay, there's the Bok Imp, the 1-1 one, one Flyer. Does mean he's going to drop to 17 because of that Elves of Deep Shadow activation. Remember, you get a black, but you also have to pay a life. And, you know, that starts to tick up, especially if Elves of Deep Shadow is your only black source here. So I hope for Aryan that he can find another swamp. And also Xandor is pretty low on black mana. And look at that. He's actually passing turn here. He is not attacking. That is interesting. He could have chosen to just attack with the 4-4 or get the 4-4 forest walk and uh, deal 4 damage. But he's not doing it. He's like, I want to keep it on blocking duty. That probably means, oh, there is a maze of if. The Maze of If is great against, of course, the Wormwood Tree Folk because it doesn't matter if it has a Force Walk or not. Now attacking with the Bog Imp, dealing a damage, taking a damage here as well, playing his own Wormwood Tree Folk. And things are looking better and better and better for Aryan. Look at how many creatures he's got on the board. And remember, if Xander plays, for example, his Tracker to take out the Bog Imp, in response, Aryan can then use his Tracker and kind of trade Trackers before... Xandor can use his tracker to take out the bug imp because of summoning sickness. So it's quite interesting here. And also the Maze of If creates some interesting synergies. He could just attack with everything and then he can uh, use the uh, Maze to take out uh, a bad block here. And he's giving it Forest Walk. Okay, so he's choosing a, choosing a little different route. Doesn't want to offer the trade. Makes absolute sense because he's got that Maze of If. So he's going to deal 5 damage here. He's going to drop to 11. And there we see the tracker. And no end of turn tracker activation from Aryan. That's quite interesting. I would have expected him at least to, uh, to destroy the scavenger folk. Choosing not to do it though. Oh, and this is why. Oh, 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 ashes to ashes. 
Oh my lord, I think this is pretty much game. Yes, Xandor still has his dark card, so he can postpone it a little bit. But now dark card is just not good enough. He's too far behind, and he'll have to start sacking forests to stay alive. And that's something you don't want to do. Oh man, so Aryan really having a great draw here, really taking over the game. Early stage, Xander was looking a little bit better, putting some pressure on the board, but now it's really Aryan taking over. There we see a chum block, and uh, I, I guess it's on the Wormwood. That means he takes uh, 5 damage in total, goes from 11 to 6, playing another forest, at least at some life, but what can he really do here? It needs to play something big, this is not going to help him. Book of Rest and um, Dark Heart of the Wood is usually a good combination, right? You can start drawing cards for forests, but he's under too much pressure now to really abuse that effect. So it looks like um, he's almost a gunner. Probably going to see an alpha strike here from Aryan, and then uh, Xander will be forced to sack a lot of forests just to stay alive. One forest equals, okay, he's going to blow up the Book of Rest just to be on the safe side, but one forest equals three lives, so he's going to take... Five, six, eight damage here. And um, yeah, he's going to sack two. That means he's going to take two. He's going to drop to four, I believe. Okay, to three, actually. I guess I made a little calculating error there. Oh, yeah, of course. I forgot about the Bach aim. So he's going to drop to three. After damage is dealt, Aryan's going to use the maze on the tracker. Yeah, and Xander's just not drawing anything here. I'm not sure how many cards he's got in hand, but... Not too many, I believe. And yeah, okay, so he's going to play in Ashes to Ashes at least. That means he's going to drop to one. And here you kind of see him do that trick where he uses the life gain from Dark Heart to still be able to cast that Ashes to Ashes. But it's not enough. I mean, he can now sack both forests. That means he's going to go to seven, and then he's going to take four damage. So he's going to drop to three. Okay, that's all correct. Finding another forest. Okay, I guess he can't postpone it. A little bit longer, right? Because he can go up to six by sacking the forest. And here you can see the dark card is really buying you time, but it's just not useful when you're under pressure like this. Gonna drop to two. Oh, there we see the sword. That is pretty cool. Oh, look at that. Another forest. And he's also showing his sword. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, it was kind of done as soon as um, Xander had to start, you know, sacrificing his forests to the Dark Heart of the Wood, then you kind of know, okay, it's over. But you want to play to your outs, and you think, maybe I'll get something. And of course, that Ashes to Ashes solved some of his problems, but it just wasn't enough. It was already too low. So this was game number one. And maybe now we're actually getting into the more interesting part of the tournament, where both of these players are going to sideboard. And uh, it's going to be interesting what they are going to board in. So we're going to let these players sideboard, and we'll catch back up to them in game number two. Game number two here, and one up for Aryan, the player on the left with the Mr. T playmat, and on the right, Xandor from Canada. And he gets to start here because he lost that first game. Ooh, we do see a mulligan here, it seems, by Aryan. So at least that's some help here for Xandor. So he's starting with six in hand. And there we see a forest into Elves of Deep Shadow, similar opening to the game one that we saw. And that is a great start for Xander Aryan, just playing a basic forest. And here we also see a three drop. There is the land leeches, the two two first striker. I really like the art. Very, very cool. And it looks like it's gonna deal some damage to land leeches next turn, unless Aryan can now do something else. No, just playing a second forest passing turn here, no swamp. And attacking here for three, that means Aryan's gonna drop to 17, another land leeches. Even more pressure here. There is a spinning slug. Okay, so that's really going to close the door here on Xandor. That spinning slug is looking mighty strong in, uh, in this board state. 2-4 for 3 mana. That's just very powerful. There is a Banshee. So Banshee is going to be really interesting. He doesn't have enough mana to get rid of the spinning slug. But of course he could also just deal direct damage with it. So Banshee, you can tap it and pay X, and then that mana, uh, half of it gets dealt to you and half of it to any target of your choice. So for example, if you pay six, then three damages for you and three damages for any target. So that can also be your opponent. We see another Spitting Slug by Aryan, and those Spitting Slugs are really doing a great job here 
kind of holding the fort down. Oh, but of course, that's the risk when you have two creatures on the board playing against a player with ashes to ashes here, ashes to ashes, destroying both of the spitting slugs, and then um, Xander swinging in for five damage. And there we see the Scarwood Bandits coming in from the sideboard, which is quite nice because they have Forest Walk. So it's basically a 2-2 Forest Walker, which makes it unblockable. But there we see Xander killing the Scarwood Bandits with the Banshee. Followed up by an attack. Aryan's on six already. It's looking very, very bleak for Aryan. What can he still do? Wormwood Tree Folk? It's something, but remember, Xander also has the Banshee to deal direct damage. So I think if he just attacks with everything, well, with the two land leeches and use the Banshee, he can probably kill. Can he do that? No, he's on seven mana. I need one more land. If he can find one more land, attack it with both here. Probably going to see one block on the land leeches. Okay, and then he's going to use the Banshee to kill the Wormwood Tree Folk and it's first strike damage. This is a really neat trick that Xander is using here. Remember, because of first strike, the Wormwood Tree Folk first takes the damage before it can deal any damage back. And then when that damage is dealt, Xander is also using the Banshee to deal that other two damage to kill the Wormwood Tree Folk. So some really nice magic here from Xander. And there we're going to see a full attack now, probably. Attacking with two land leeches, I assume, and maybe also the elves, also the elves of Deep Shadow dealing five here. That means Aryan needs to start sacking forests again to his Dark Heart of the Wood. And I think in both of these games, we're not really seeing the power of Dark Heart of the Wood because now it's just being used as some kind of last resort, you know, to kind of stay alive when you're actually already dying. You know, you're, you're basically already dead. I can't really see a way out of here for... Um, for Aryan, of course, I understand that both players try to stay alive as long as possible. I mean, this is a finals of a tournament, but it's close to impossible. It looks like we're going for a 1-1 here. That means we're going into a game number three. And uh, let's see. I mean, he also has the Banshee activation, right? So he can first attack, then he's forcing Aryan to sack. So he's gaining six, going to 11. And he's going to take a total of seven damage. He's going to drop to four. Oh, and look at that, Xander just doesn't have enough to kill him here because he's on four. And with the Banshee, he can deal... Oh, he's actually going to play something. He's going to play Wormwood Tree Folk. I want to say with the Banshee, he can deal three more damage. And look at look at him, sealing the forest, and that's it. So again, we saw a match here where, um, you know, Dark Heart of the Wood didn't really play the role that it wants to play. And maybe we're going to see that in game number three. But uh, this game two went fast. I really thought... Um, that when um, Aryan casted uh, the first Spitting Slug, it was like, oh, you're pretty safe. But then that second Spitting Slug and the Ashes to Ashes, that was really the game changer when Xander could go, you know, full speed and really ram in on his life total. And I think that was the decider here in game number two. So um, let's quickly go to game three and see who's going to win the Dark Only Tournament right here on Timmy Talks. Let's go. Game number three. Okay, 1-1. One, one. Aryan's on the play, so I guess he's a slight favorite, although Xander's deck is making a really good impression thus far. Wow, again opening with Elves of Deep Shadow here. Great start for Xander. Oh, this card is cool. Comes in from the sideboard. Um, Scarwood Hag, and I believe you can pay three green or four green to give target creature Forest Walk, and this is interesting. You can also tap it and then target creature loses Forest Walk. So this is really a nice card from the sideboard. I don't think it's gonna stick around soon because there is the tracker, the 2-2, two, two, and you can pay two green and tap it and it fights another creature, right? So it can kill that Scarwood Hack. Unfortunately, it's such a cool card to see actually being played and it's being played in the finals. So that is really cool. And he's actually attacking with the 2-2 two, two. and uh, deciding damage over taking, taking care of that Scarwood Hag probably makes more sense. And there is a Swamp for Xandor. Is he going to play something out? And there we see a Land Leech. Just 2 2 first strike, so more pressure. Things are looking good for Xandor. And Aryan, he needs mana. That's the first thing that he needs. Cannot find it here playing a tracker, but doesn't have double green to actually activate the tracker. And um, I wonder what he's going to do here. Probably going to use the tracker on the Scarwood. Oh, no, he's got a better plan. Ashes to Ashes. And the Ashes to Ashes kind of gave him the game in uh, in game number two. And now maybe it's going to give him 
the tournament here. Ashes to ashes and things are looking bad for Aryan. Dropping here to 14. Finding Dark Heart of the Wood. Again, it's not going to be very decisive when you're under pressure. It's not a useful card. And also he has only one forest. Here we go. Another forest by Xandor. This is, oh man, this is going to be an easy victory here, it seems. And there we see Scarwood Bandits also coming from the sideboard because of that Forest Walk ability, 2-2 Forest Walker. And it can also steal artifacts, but that's not that relevant in this matchup. Attacking with everything here. So he's going in for, what, 7 damage. Look at Aryan, he's on 2. I mean, he's so gonna die here. There we see a Spitting Slug. I wonder, Xander, if you put in more Spitting Slugs. And this is it, okay? This is it. Wow, 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 wow. So, um, a big congratulations here to Xandor for winning your first tournament here on Timmy Talks. Congratulations. I'm going to send you the very cool Tim the Enchanter Protocol Sorcerer Altar. Um, you know, you deserve it. Every winner, uh, just a little info, every winner of any Timmy Talks tournament gets an altar like this. There are only 50 though, so when I, when I run out, uh, sorry, 50, there are only 25. So when I run out of these, I run out of these um, and they're made by um, Park Goldfield. So uh, really cool, really cool to give this away to you, Xander, and you really earned it. And also Aryan, as a runner up, you did a great job to show us that black and green is the strongest color combination when you're playing a The Dark Only tournament. It was a very interesting format. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you want to take a look at all the decks that participated in this tournament, there is a link in the description below to the tournament page and there you can find all the deck photos with also the deck names and the results of those decks. You can also find a link to a playlist I believe there and if you click on the playlist you can see all the other uh, uh, matches uh, back that I recorded of the tournament including all the matches that I played in the group stages. That was just a lot of fun. I played blue and red myself. So I would like to thank you for watching this tournament right here on Timmy Talks. Let me know what you think of tournaments like this. If you'd like to see more in the future, if you have any ideas of interesting tournaments, let me know in the comment section. And uh, if you want to support the channel, you're actually already doing that by watching this video, but you can do more if you want to. You can click on that like button. That helps a lot. Also, you can become a member if you're not a member yet and of course leave a uh, comment and also support uh, or share I should say this video on your socials if you want to. All that helps the channel moving forward and uh, helps me to keep making this type of content for you. So if you appreciate it, you can show that by doing these things. What you can also do is you be can become a patron of the show and you can do that by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can already support the show starting with a single dollar and then you will have access to our fantastic Discord. Yes! I mean, that is, isn't that what makes life complete, right? Having access to the Timmy Talks Discord. Yeah! So, uh, but in all seriousness, I would really appreciate it if you could uh, bring a visit, pop pop to the um, to Timmy Talks Patreon page, have a look, see if it's something for you. If not, it, it's not. Uh, if it is, you know, become a member and join the Timmy's there on the Timmy Talks Discord. Um, what else is there to say? I guess we're we're all ready. We're all wrapped up, and we're ready to go to the end scroll and take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.